it's time to practice once again. It's time to orient ourselves with respect to the whole world, with respect to our bodies and our feelings and our moods. Even for a few moments or a few minutes, this is what the verses of the Lankavatara Sutra give us. They give us this opportunity to turn once more from the world of illusion to enlightenment. So let's proceed with verse 644. From the differentiation of an objective world and the senses, the Vijnana is set in motion in eight ways. Thus the aspects of self-nature are three, but when imagelessness obtains, they all cease. <clears throat> so we're heading for imagelessness, which doesn't sound particularly appealing. It sounds like being blind. But what imagelessness means is we're not taking our, our cue from the usual understanding. We're not taking our cue from our body feelings. We are appreciating the liberated nature of our mind. And when liberated, this mind can choose to be happy. This is the choice we've got. We can turn to happiness or we can continue turning to the world of the senses, the world of conventional understanding. So this is what the first part of this verse is about, from the differentiation of an objective world and the senses. The objective world, we differentiate this. Yes, there's this world out there. And we've got our senses which tell us about this world. And this sets in motion the Vijnana. And Vijnana is consciousness. And we're told it's set in motion in eight ways. And this, these eight ways include all possibilities. The eight ways consist of the six senses, the six so-called sense perceptions, and we call and we say six of them because there's the five usual ones. And in Indian thought, the mind is also a sense. The mind is what senses mental objects, which is a, a fascinating way of looking at things somewhat more comprehensive. You might argue, yeah, but the physical senses are sensing what is actually out there. But if I sense a mental object like a ball, if I imagine a ball, that's not real. Well, there's a lot of room for debate there. As far as the Lankavatara Sutra is concerned, none of it is truly real. So the imaginary ball is as real as an actual physical ball. They're both sense objects. But I don't want to get sidetracked into that. So there's the six sense modes, we could say. The six sense modes of experience. There's also that mind which has a choice of either identifying with all that or with deciding to be happy regardless. This is the mind that can practice enlightenment. This is the mind that can free itself of its own habits. This is the mind that can stop being an addict 
with regards to the so-called objective world and its own personal drama. And the final or first consciousness is sometimes called the Alaya. And this is simply consciousness. And it's the nature of consciousness to create all of this. It's the nature of consciousness to project itself outwards like the sun projecting out its light just as it's the nature of God to create. But this isn't what God's essential reality is. It's not what the sun's essential reality is. If we take the sun as a, an analogy for consciousness, then we tend to think of it in rather sentimental terms about how all life is dependent on the sun. Actually, although this is true in one sense, the sun is a hugely destructive force. And as a documentary I was watching recently reminded me of, if you were out in the space, uh, if you were out in space, assuming you could breathe and everything, then the sun's radiation would kill you. What we should really be grateful for is the Earth's magnetic field. We should be grateful for the fact that the Earth has got a molten core which generates this magnetic field. This magnetic field protects us from all the damaging solar radiation. So actually, it's this which allows life to exist on Earth. If this magnetic field wasn't there, there wouldn't be any life on Earth. Because the sun's radiation would destroy it. <laughs> so taking the analogy a little bit further, this magnetic field is like the ego. The ego creates its own world. The fact that life exists is a byproduct of the sun's nature. It's a filtering of the sun's nature. And it's at this point the analogy breaks down because we have the option of allowing the ego which constructs our apparent life to disappear. We can enter into the sun of consciousness. This is the option we have. The ego is at the little is at the end of the journey of the sun's light. But true being is actually the sun itself. The sun is indifferent to life. And if you want to get into theistic terms, this can be quite interesting. Because God is indifferent to creation. And this might upset people who see God as some kind of substitute parent figure. But there's an, there's an, an, there's an analogy here. Of God being like the sun. Creation is simply a byproduct of God. And we need to get beyond sentimentalizing God as a substitute parent figure who we can somehow sway to our own ego will with appropriate flattery and behavior. We need to get over that 
and realize that we can find the heart of all creation within our own being. And this is consciousness. This is consciousness. This is the alaya. This is the alaya vijnana. It's like the sun giving out its rays. And these rays take on a life of their own, forgetting the sun from which they emanated. So, this is what the mind that has a choice, the mind vijnana which has a choice, it can turn to this consciousness once again, or it can get caught up in the little rays of sunlight. The verse also says, thus the aspects of self-nature are three. And this refers to the three svabhavas the three realities. Two of them are supposed realities or apparent realities, the apparent the reality of the apparent objective world, the reality of the individual, and there's a dynamic tension between the two which keeps the mind in bondage. But there's also the third Svabhava which is called perfect knowledge. And this is when the mind breaks out from its bondage and looks to the alaya once again, looks to the source of creation, looks to the sun, the light of consciousness. And this is our practice.